Well, hello there. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I'm Crystal Crawford. Um, this week on today's episode, I really, really, really wanted to talk about um, beyond functioning in a world that doesn't really function for you. Um, this week is Suicide Awareness Week, Suicide Prevention Week. Um, hi, Eva. And, um, and yesterday I was online like I am. <laughs> hi. And um, Dane here, the, one of the co-creators of Access Consciousness, was doing a Facebook Live, and um, I just burst into tears right in the middle of it. And it, it was this mix of, you know, he was talking about his story of, hi, Carrie, hi, Sandra, hi, guys, um, hello. He was talking about this, um, you know, 17 years ago when he didn't want to be on the planet, and he basically gave the universe... Um, you know, six months and then he was going to kill himself. And so, I mean, we've been, as Access Consciousness facilitators, we've been really raising awareness around, you know, suicide and, and what other choices you have for the last few years. And so this isn't a new remembrance for me of like looking back on where I was seven years ago, but for some reason yesterday hit me really hard. And um, I want to tell you a little bit about my story and and really go into the tools that have, you know, created my life the way it is right now. I mean, you know, my life doesn't, it's not even, it's not even a shadow of what it was. It's so much greater and so much better. Um, yeah, where do I start? I, I, well, one of, one of the things I was going to say is, um, the first thing I want to say is like, if you ever do feel like you don't want to be here anymore, you've got choice. You've got way more choices than then you're probably told and one of them is leaving and and I really do want to include that in the conversation um, along with everything else so let me tell you where I was so I'm 42 this year um, I'm an access consciousness certified facilitator I travel the world I live in a beautiful house in Vancouver I've got a, a relationship that really works for me all this fun life stuff right seven years ago I was 35 I was married for the second time I was living in Ontario. Hi, Chrissy. Hi, Yvonne. And um, I was a landscape designer. Um, more importantly, we were living in this really big farmhouse, sort of right outside the city. So we had a lot of land around us. And it was this massive place um, that, anyway, massive place. And my husband and I at the time had just gone through about three or four years of really, really ups and downs in our relationship. Like I was having a really hard time in the relationship. I was having a hard time being faithful. I was having a hard time being happy. I was just generally having a hard time. And I want to preface this hard time by saying that I had been having a hard time my whole life up to that point. And the way that I was taught, this is what I want to talk about. The way that I was taught to function in the world was from telling, knowing what your feelings are, sharing them with people, knowing what your needs are, asking them for the, asking for them to be met, um, communicating in a healthy way, which of course had rules. Um, and so basically the way I was taught to function in this world was, was under the premise of know yourself. Know yourself fully and completely. Know what's going on with you and be able to share that with the other person so that the other person can empathize and then you guys can create that wasn't in the conversation though, but you guys can like come up with a solution to whatever the problem is. And this is the way I was taught to function in the world. Well, with this as a foundation, and, and let me include in this that with that foundation came a lot of needing to judge things because you had to judge whether or not something, hi Shivi, you had to judge whether or not something was healthy or unhealthy. You had to judge whether or not it was functional or not functional. You had to judge whether it was good or bad. Um, this whole model of how I was taught to function in this world was based on judgment and decisions and feelings. So, but that's what I was taught and I was determined to be good at it. And so I, you know, got into one marriage and then I got right into another marriage and then I kept trying to, trying to do relationships with my family and nothing was actually working for me. Now, what do I mean by working for me? I mean, like, I literally was surrounded by people that seemed to be able to be happy with 
normal stuff. You know, they seem to be able to be happy with working a job, coming home at night, watching TV, having a beer, um, going to church on Sundays. They, they seem to really like that. And I could not be happy with that. And I tried, and there were moments and pockets where I was happy with that. But in my second marriage, I was starting to turn to alcohol because, because unhappy, because I just didn't, I didn't, I was not finding any other way to, to have what it seemed like everybody else around me could have with a lot of ease. And, and the fact that they could have it with ease and I didn't know how to have it was starting to get me to this place where I just didn't see the point to being here anymore. And we're talking about like 36 years of trying and trying and trying and trying this way and trying that way and going to therapy and going to Bible school and trying this marriage and then trying another marriage and then trying extramarital affairs and then, you know, like trying different people on for size and literally like it from my point of view, trying everything that I knew how to try to, to try to have this happiness that seemed to be eluding me, but everybody else could have. And I basically one, one day it was after church and, um, my husband had invited our friend over and they had had a big lunch and so they were inside napping and it was a big property so hi guys um there was a big property so I could get lost onto the lawn and and sob so I did well I actually did it on the front lawn which is actually kind of amusing because if somebody had woken up they would have found me there collapsed sobbing my heart out because I was probably there for a solid hour or two and I just cried and cried and cried and I laid at the base of this shrub this big bush and I just cried and cried and cried and cried and at that point I'd had a little bit of experience with drinking enough to black out I'd never done that before but in this particular relationship I had drank about three times and discovered that I could black out and that I didn't remember anything afterwards so my plan was that as I was laying there sobbing to go run a bath and bring a bottle of alcohol up and while everybody was sleeping just get so drunk that I blacked out and then drown and while I was laying there it sort of occurred to me that drowned in a bathtub upstairs and dead, I would be really heavy. <laughs> and we lived in an old farmhouse, so the staircase that came off that bathroom was really narrow, and it was an iron claw, it was an iron tub. So breaking the bathtub and getting me down the stairs was going to be a bit of a thing, and the, the window in that bathtub, like throwing me out of the window, was going to be really hard. <laughs> So my logistics mind went to work and I think it was something about that that stopped me. But I was like, I mean, I was literally like, in my mind, I was like, the booze is there, the bathtub's there, I'm just going to go run it, nobody will know, um, it's a big house, I'll just lay up there and die. So something in that process stopped me and I didn't have words for it at the time, it wasn't like what else was possible with words, it was just like this ache, this, it was almost like an ache in my heart of like, what else is possible? here that I've never considered and um, a couple days later I had a really good friend of mine um, no 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 that's not true she wasn't a really good friend of mine then she was a brand new friend from church she barely knew me called me out of the blue and said that she'd been seeing this lady that was you know a 45 minute drive away from me who was busy and booked for two months in advance but that she knew that I was struggling and would give me her appointment so she did, and I started seeing this lady named Ashna, who did this modality called bioenergetic intolerance elimination. And Ashna was also a nutritionist, so she changed my diet, and she changed the supplements I was on, and started. I started seeing her two to three times a week. And it was one of these, it was a modality that played with energies, interestingly enough. And so as she was doing these, um, as I was having these sessions that were clearing energies, I was changing permanently. And I started getting my legs back under me and started like not falling apart at everything, you know, and I started, I think also too, there was this choice of like really choosing to live in that moment. Um, and it, so I saw her for about a year and a half and then we moved really far away from her for like, um, like a three hour drive away from her and I still would take day trips down to see her. But what started happening then was this new desire of like, God, there has to be a way to be happy. There just has to be a way to be happy without seeing a professional once a week. Like, how do these other people do it? Thinking that other people were happy, of course. And, and that's when I actually started, um, my friend Marnie Barenko came back into my world on Facebook and I saw that she had Access Consciousness listed as her employer and that's when I did some searching and I got my first bar session. And 
in that bar session, we, it, I had it with Juna Getter, for those, for those of you that know Juna, and um, she ended up doing verbal processing and the clearing statement with me while she was running my bars. And I got off that table after an hour and a half, and I was so light. It was like, it was like I didn't have a body, because that's how light I was. And I was like, holy fuck. I, like, like, literally, I could tell that we had changed as much in an hour and a half session that had taken me like a year and a half to change with this other lady who I was so grateful for. And that's really what started. I think I had like three or four more bars sessions and then I took a bars class only to get to foundation because I didn't care about bars. <laughs> and, um, and foundation is what changed, literally changed the trajectory of my whole life because here's what happened. And this is what I wanted to talk about. You know, I was taught one way to function in the world, which is from feelings and communicating well and knowing your feelings and, and knowing your needs. But what Access started to, to teach me and Access started to give me and empower me with was that I know stuff. Now, that seems like, especially if you've been in Access a while, that seems really basic, right? That's like, yeah, 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 empowering you to know what you know. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Here, here's why that's so significant. <laughs> here's, here's what it is about that. 99% of all your thoughts, feelings, and emotions are not yours. Now, I've been doing access now for about four years, and I go to a lot of fucking classes, a lot of them. Almost every weekend I'm in a class. That one fact gets more and more profound the more classes I take. Because what happens when you're first getting into access consciousness tools is like, you know, you hear that and it's like this earth shattering revelation. And then, you know, you go to more and more classes and people still ask you, well, is that yours? Does it belong to you? And you're like, no, but uh, blah, 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 blah with the it doesn't belong to me. No, 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 no. <laughs> Truth does it belong to you. <laughs> now, when you look at how unhappy I was at 35 and you look at my childhood and you look at like, I was raised with a mother who's really choosing a lot of crazy and was really emotionally abusive. I had a father who was, um, he was actually diagnosed bipolar and manic depressive. So they had a lot of arguments and there was a lot of emotional turmoil in my house. There was a lot of just, there was also a lot of kids and a lot of dogs and we had a lot of piano students. So there was a lot of energies in my house all the time. You put me in that family and I chose this family, um, super aware, super sensitive, without any of that information, who grows up really with this desire to help and to heal and who's also a healer, you know, and, and then you put her in the world like that without any of that information. Yeah, yeah, Dominique, she said, so grateful for your story. It helps me to see my awareness, but also my shit, what's, what not is from me. Yeah. Um, and so then you give this super aware being who also loves to heal um, I'm going to say the wrong tools, the tools that don't actually work, you know, of feel your feelings, know what your needs are, um, be aware of other, be, have empathy for other people, don't ever be mean, be kind, you give her all these rules, well then I, as the being I am, I'm going to try to go do that to the best of my ability, because that's what I want to do. So then let's say you take that same being, who has all those same capacities, and you give her different information, of like, hey, you are so psychic. Did you know that you pick up on everything from eight to 8,000 miles in every direction? You know things that you don't even acknowledge you know, and you know them instantly. The moment you walk into a room, the moment you tap into somebody's being, you know stuff. Did you know that you have the capacity to heal people? And if you don't acknowledge that you have the capacity to heal people, that you just do it without even knowing you're doing it, and that that can make you feel really wonky when you're not acknowledging it? Did you know that you have the capacity to change the energy of situations in people's bodies, in people's worlds? You have that capacity. Do you know that you've been trying to do that without acknowledging that you're doing that? Did you know that nobody else's way of functioning in the world is your responsibility? That they have total choice? They have total choice. They get to choose to be unhappy they get to choose to be crunchy. They get to choose to need to be right all the time. They can choose that. You don't have to do anything about that. 
you, that you don't have to do anything. You, all you have to do is be willing to be aware of it and go, cool, can I use that to my advantage? Because that's what they're choosing. Um, and did you know that you actually, you created this life that you came into? Did you know that, that you chose this? I wonder what you knew when you chose this. I wonder what you knew that would get you here, right? I wonder what you know. So that same being with all those same capacities, given one set of instructions on how to live, led to me wanting to die. <laughs> because what's the point? I can't do it. I can't do it the way that they say that I should be able to do it. I literally cannot function that way. I don't function that way. But nobody knew enough to give me that information and I'm not making them wrong. I'm not making any of our parents wrong. I'm going, so, and, and if any of this is a new information to you, what I, the basic tool I want to give you that I was given in the very beginning of all of this journey of having a very different set of information presented to my world is that what's, what's light for me is true for me and what's heavy for me is not true for me. And even this morning, like I just became aware of several different realities and I'm like, what's true for me? How do I want to function in the world? What would be a fun way for me to be in the world today? All of a sudden my space lightened and I, I knew and I started choosing differently. You know, no matter what anybody else around me is choosing, I get to choose to have my reality. But that has been a muscle that I've had to train because I didn't have that training when I was young. What I, the training that I had when I was young was everybody around you gets crunchy and so you go crunchy too to try to understand it, to try to make it better so that you can get in there kind of like Neo in the Matrix got into like the the virus, that other guy, and he like exploded him from the inside. It's like that's what we try to do, but we go into other people's realities so that we feel shitty too, so that we can understand it, so that we can change it. But again, that goes back to this other handbook we were given that doesn't actually work to change things. It makes us feel heavy. It makes us, it gives us this sense of, it, it puts us into somebody else's reality. And so now this new skill, this new muscle is really just observing everybody else's reality of going, oh, that's yours. Okay, cool. I see where you're functioning from. That's actually not what I'm choosing today. And I don't have to resist and react to you. I can just look at it and go, oh, okay, I'm going to choose something else today. I'm actually going to outcreate this in a totally different direction because that's way more fun for me. It's way more fun for me to be light and choose from question and choice and possibility and contribution, even when I don't know what that means. That's way more fun for me. And training that muscle instead has actually led me to wanting to be on the planet. Now, I will tell you that, um, so I've been doing Access Consciousness about two years, uh, four years, I'm sorry. About two years ago, in an advanced body class, I, I had to acknowledge that I was still, after a lot of classes, after being a certified facilitator, still trying to, trying to live. And I had a really potent session with Jason Rabineau. If you've never had a session with him, he's amazing. He does, he does access tools mixed with this um, rolfing on your body. So it was this bodywork session that just like loosened up a lot of shit in my world. And for, the, for after two years of using access tools, I finally, finally acknowledged an even more buried reality, which was that I, I really didn't want to be here. It was really hard. It had been really hard to be me. And, and so that's another tool that I want to give you is sometimes you really do need to indulge just leaving. And I did for the full day. I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. I was in class. I was in an advanced body class with Gary. And for a full day, I had body work done and I just let myself cry and I let myself not choose not to be on the planet anymore because it is just a choice. And it was such a gift. That was such a gift. Because at the end of that day, I had chosen not to be here anymore. I didn't know how I was going to end it, but it was, I was done. And um, because I had allowed myself to have that choice and just to be done, and I hadn't resisted it, and I hadn't reacted to it, and I didn't make it wrong, um, at, by the end of the day, I went to bed, and I got up the next morning, and I remember I was sitting on the edge of a massage table when Gary was right there, and I got in the microphone, and I just said how grateful I was for the allowance to go or stay and how grateful I was for these tools and that I really did desire to be here now. 
And I remember that moment so well because it was, it was an actual choice. You know, I wasn't, I didn't have to, I didn't have to fight myself. I didn't have to fight um, a secret desire anymore. I could just be and actually choose to live. And um, I would say for me, personally, I don't know how much I talk about it, but for me, choosing to live is, it's not like it's an every 10 second choice of like, okay, I'm constantly wanting to die and I constantly have to live. Um, it's just, it is a 10 second choice. It's, we talk about that in Access, of like you have a new choice in every 10 seconds. And you can in this 10 seconds choose to go and you can in the next 10 seconds choose to stay. And for me, choosing to create my life and choosing to really create my life and not get into other people's realities is, is a muscle that I'm training all, all the time, all the time. And, um, but I would so much rather train the muscle of choice than train the muscle of being in other people's realities and needing to understand them or change them in a way that I can't do. That doesn't actually work. The only thing that actually gives other people the possibility of choosing something else is you choosing to live, you choosing the way of living that works for you. That's where you become the inspiration to a different possibility. Um, and I've seen that more and more and more as I go to classes with Gary and Dane. The more, I'm, the more I become me, the more I can perceive of them, you know, and of any, of, I would say that Gary and Dane and then my closest friends and some of the people that inspire me the most around me are the ones that I continually look at and go, yeah, what are they choosing? That's really cool. Like, what, I wonder what it would take for me to choose that in my world, you know? And I wonder what it would take for me to be willing to have the adventure of living that Gary has. I wonder what it would take for me to be willing to be the, the size and the scope that Dane's willing to be. Hi, Eleanor. I wonder what it would take for me to be willing to have and choose those things. And I let them inspire me. And, and the thing is with people that are choosing more than you've chosen so far, you, can, you have choice there too. Like you can choose to be upset or jealous or envious or go to the place of like, well, I could never do that. Or you could go, gosh, that's so cool. I wonder what it would take for me to choose that too. And really train that muscle of choosing to be here, choosing to create. So I guess, you know, if, if you know somebody that is struggling a lot with being here, share this with them. And I guess what I, if I could tell you, if I could share anything with you, like for any of you that ever struggle with wanting to die, is the first thing is that you can, and it's not wrong. It's just a choice. And the second thing is, and would you be willing to look at the possibility of the world without you in it? Like what would this world be like without us in it? Would it be greater or would it be less? And if it would be less and choosing to be here would be a gift to you and us, what's light for you is true for you. So are you feeling kind of heavy right now? Is it possible that everything you're feeling, everything you have a sensation of in your body, is it possible that it's not yours? Is it possible that you have capacities that go beyond anything you were told? Is it possible that you have a willingness to heal and a willingness to know that you've never been shown? And what choices do you actually have available to you that you haven't considered? What choices do you have available to you that you haven't considered? You know, the one thing about not knowing how to get out of a place, because I know for me, like, you know, at 35, and at, at 35 for sure, I didn't know how to get out of where I was. I had tried everything that I knew how to. I absolutely required somebody else to show me something. And that's what, when I look at the energy now, and I look at, you know, I didn't have the tools then, but I had something. And when I look at that now and that silent, 
cry in my world, you know, in my guts, you know, that I look at um, that the universe had my back, that when I was willing to go, I don't know what else there is, but something has to be there, that pull, you know, the universe was able to bring in something. And so you don't even have to know how to get out from where you are. You just have to be willing to go, universe, show me. I can't do this by myself. I'm not even going to do it by myself. Show me. And, and pull whatever that is into your world and something will show up. And I guess that's the last thing that I want to get, leave you with is that you're not alone. You, no matter how alone you feel, no matter where you are on this journey, no matter whether or not you have access to tools or you don't have access to tools, you're not alone. You, you may feel alone. It may seem like you're alone. You may be aware of a lot of alone, but you're not. You've got every single molecule of consciousness. You are literally surrounded by consciousness. And the moment you're willing to choose something, consciousness springs into action on your behalf, springs into action. And I'm so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful for you guys being here today. And if this contributed, please share it because this suicide thing is crazy. And I know that there's a lot of really brilliant beings choosing to leave right now, and that's okay. And we require your brilliance on the planet right now. We require people on the planet right now that are willing to know that they know. We require you. We require you. We require you. We desire you. And, you know, it won't show up the way you think it will. It will show up greater. And, yeah. So that's it for today. I'm really grateful for you guys live. Thank you so much for being here and for being in my world. And I'm grateful to be here. And what else is possible? What else is truly possible that we haven't considered? What other choices do we have available to us? That's it for today. I adore you. I'll see you next week. Keep choosing. <laughs>